Hi, I'm Joy Sanders. Welcome to my interview with Frank Carlier. Frank Carlier has been important on the Charleston scene musically for uh, several, for decades, and um, has worked in all different areas of music as well as teaching. He's worked with Charleston Symphony Orchestra, other bands, rock. He's done his own work, which his CDs are wonderful. Check them out. And uh, he has his own place over in uh, Mount Pleasant. And um, I heard that he had I heard the song through a friend of mine, and I just was really so taken by it. It's absolutely beautiful. It is written from the point of view of someone who's stationed overseas during the holidays and can't come home. And um, I just thought you'd probably be interested in knowing the backstory on that as well as hearing the song. So we're posting the song, and then I went out there and had a little chat with him, and we had a pretty good time. He's a cool guy, and he's a lot of fun, and he'll just tell you what's on his mind. And uh, so... Uh, you know, I wanted to say just from myself and everyone here at the Charleston Times Television Network, Merry Christmas to everyone out there, and especially if you're out in the service. You know, we're really sorry that you can't be with your family this year, but we wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. Oh, and I broke up my rock and roll shoes for this. Hi, you're with Joy Sanders today, and we're out here talking to Frank Carlier. Frank Carlier has put out an absolutely beautiful Christmas song this year called Christmas in Afghanistan, and it's written from the point of view of one of the troops staying over there this year. And of course, our heart goes out to them, and all our love. Thank you for what you do, and we care about you. And I wanted to come over here and talk to Frank about the song. I thought it was very impactful, and I just think it's very interesting. So with that, I'm going to introduce you to Frank Carlier and just let him talk about it himself. Um, Frank, how did this come about for you? Um, well, I, I did, I've had a few releases and done well in the European market, the American roots-based music. Uh, the song itself came out that uh, from my hometown, I had some uh, faint, they were my brother's age, and they were serving, they were rangers, and they asked him if I'd get together with them because they were fans of my music. And I had an idea about doing a song from the point of view of someone over there, not trying to get over, like, politically. And a, a lot of the songs that, you know, I, I really didn't like that were made after 9-11 and stuff, it seems like, you know, they were a little too gung-ho from armchair quarterback. I wanted to get it from somebody that was in the trenches. So I was getting a lot of information off them. And I had a student, guitar student I taught for quite a while, who was a member of the SEAL teams. So, you know, I was kind of getting it from their perspective. And, you know, the character I created was basically from where I'm from. You know, I used a lot of, uh, I was born in Morgantown, West Virginia. I used the mine disaster that happened not too long ago. And um, I usually build my characters around people out of the Appalachians. That's, I know those people the best, so that's where I build my characters usually. And a lot of those are serving. I, I think West Virginia had the most people serve in Vietnam. You know, it's the way it goes. I mean, mine shine and get on down the line where I'm from. And so a lot of people go into the military. I actually did myself after music school. Wow, terrific. Um, who all worked with you on this? Well, it was, I've been out of the loop tell you the truth and uh, was getting new to Facebook because I was getting my shop, Carlos School of Guitar and Music, I will put my plug in. Um, and I was, uh, my web designer said get on Facebook, make a lot of friends and I did and I saw one of the guys who promoted me was on Facebook um, and uh, he does the medicine show, it's called, pretty big thing over there and uh, he goes where have you been? Are you dead? And I said, no, I'm in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. I'm probably close to dead. You know, but uh, because of health issues, I've been out of the loop. I had an operation on the botched up on my sinuses. So he asked me if I had a Christmas song. And I said, well, yeah, I got one, but it's kind of dark. And he goes, well, can you have it to me on Wednesday? I said, well, you can't give me a break from Wednesday. I mean, I've got four days. And he goes, nope, it has to be on Wednesday. So I called up. Jay Miley, who I work with, he's worked with me on all my solo albums, and uh, he was 
got me in some recording time, you know. But we had only like four or five hours, that was it. And so um, I had the, the middle section I wanted to be coming out a little different. And uh, I called the Reverend Johnny Mack and um, told him, I said, I think I got something perfect for you to play slide on, which John, you know, during the heyday, we played actually in the same band, but not at the same time at one time. And we did some studio work, I think none of it that we were really proud of. We were working for someone else that shall name he who was his name is never spoken. But John was good enough. Uh, he came over and basically you know sat down with and you know did an amazing job on the slide. And it was perfect sound as soon as he started playing it would fit. I think John knows me well enough that he knew I, I work a lot with uh, with classical musicians. I've worked with the symphony quite a bit. And one of my collaborators is a guy named Matt Walker who plays cello. And he's actually got done just composing a piece for Yo-Yo Ma. So I work with him. He's out of Nashville. And I think John came in and just immediately took it almost like taking the guitar and playing it like you would a stringed instrument. So. And um, then I, that was it, basically, you know, that we all worked real fast as a team. Uh, there's a few things I'd like to, before I release it myself, um, that I might want to add to it, but, you know, it was basically John and me and Jay Miley, and uh, Jay did a lot of uh, mixing, and uh, he got mad because I started listening to the other songs, and I was going, I'm going to send him a rough demo because we weren't done and he was furious I sent the rough demo. I said, you know, I was listening to this song. It isn't like the ones they have me. <laughs> I said, I don't want you to do all this work. And they said, no, we're not going to put this on there because it was somewhat of a darker nature. And uh, But it came out pretty good and it's doing very well. And then we made a YouTube video to go along with it and uh, came out very nicely too. The, the person who did that is... Uh, He's at Wondell High School, you know, Lane Kirsten. He was, uh, and I had some major guys work on one, and I chose the kids. You know, he did a great job. I think he's got a future with him on the slideshow, because I thought it was excellent. Well, you got to give credit where credit is due, and um, we really love the song. We're going to have it up on the Charleston Times Television Network during the holidays, along with our um, interview here with Frank. Anything you want to say to the troops? Well, I, I, you know, I feel that the troops, you know, as I, you know, being an ex-veteran, you know, you, you don't have to agree with the, the political situation, but I don't think anybody could not support the troops. They do what they are told. Um, I think now that I, I meet a lot of people, veterans, and through this I've met to a lot of veterans who, and people who've had losses of their children loved ones and you know it, it's actually been kind of a sad type of a thing and like the character itself I meet him up but it's almost like I know him I know he's imaginary but I can see him. Um, it's a bond that I think we all have like there's people I meet now who have been really deep into the the bad stuff and they'll come up and shake your hand if they find, find out you're a bad I go, geez, guys, I was in the submarine force. I'd have been a mile and a half under the water. No one going to get me. And the worst action I saw was a barroom fight, strip joint. And I kind of caused that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a brotherhood, and I think it's become more and more so. Uh, people don't appreciate it. It's like from my hometown, I'm from, you know, pretty much of a poor coal town. And they'll be getting up uh, these care packages. And, and the main thing these guys want is socks. And it's like, Lord, we got enough money to, you know, fly politicians around the world. We have enough money to get their portraits painted. But we don't have money enough to get these guys socks. Yeah, that sounds kind of ridiculous to me. So, you know, I think everybody needs to keep... Um, 
think of what they're doing, keep them in the heart, no matter what you feel about the situation. I didn't really interject a lot of that to the song. It was just, you know, meeting real people. I mean, there was a, a lady whose husband was a ranger, and um, she worked at a pub down in Savannah, and me and my girlfriend used to go down there. And I remember it was a couple of years, and she looked like she aged 10 years. Because, you know, during the Vietnam conflict, Hey, if you wanted to go back and do another one, you could, you know. But, you know, it was kind of one tour only. You had that chance. Nowadays, they grind them out. They're back to back. And it puts stress on their lives, you know. So the song was just kind of written from their point of view. You know, I, it wasn't making a political statement, what I feel about Afghanistan. But, you know, and thanks to them, you know, when I sat down and did it, they gave me a, I could make the character pretty good, you know. And you know something that you said that I wanted to touch on because uh, that's one of my little pet peeves, that kind of political correctness that says if you don't agree with everything that they're, you know, with what the political agenda is here, that you don't support the troops. And that's so not true. There are so many people, I think our, all our hearts are with them, especially this time of the year when they're away from their families and we all enjoy everything we do and they're out in Sandville. Well, um, yeah, and it, it, a lot of that I wanted to get from them, I said, would you allow, would be allowed to openly celebrate Christmas? I said, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, and one of the, I don't know if I should say this, I wanted to end it like on the bridge. I said, and I said, what's the derogatory term? And he said, you know, what are you talking about? I said, well, there every, you know, in every war there is. And he said, oh, it's hockey. And I said, hockey? He said, you never watched Johnny Quest? I go, you guys are too young to know who Johnny Quest was. But yes, I did, you know. And so I used the term, and, and I was going over the stuff. They know that a lot of my stuff is very edgy. I mean, I kind of admit I was kind of ignored a lot by Nashville. And when I went to the European market, they let me say what I want to say usually. But they were even afraid of that, you know, because that was, that was, a, but, you know, I said, well, that one has to go on. I said I would change a couple things, and but uh, yeah, it was um, a lot. Of, you know, they helped me out a lot to shape the character. I just all I did was put him where he was from. Well, I think it's a beautiful song, and I think it's so well done, and we're very proud to present it this holiday season. Well, thank and you. thank you personally from me and from all the families of the troops and from the troops. I think it's, you know, a little better than have a blue Christmas. And, um, well, yeah. you know, I mean, you know. It was, it was, you know, like, there's, you know, the one song they had, I guess they say it on the radio, I say it here, they, you know, I'll put a boot in your ass, and it's like, isn't that type of a song? It's, it's, not so easy to put a boot in somebody's ass and shooting at you, uh, trying to blow up your vehicle, and if you get caught, it'll be hit you. I mean, you know, it's armchair quarterback. This is from his perspective. This is about his losses. And uh, you know, I like my character. You know, I'd like to buy him a beer if he really existed, but I'll just have to drink it for him. Well, there you go. We've been here with Frank Carlio today talking about his song that he's come out with, Christmas in Afghanistan, which is a must-listen to, and you'll find it on the site at the Charleston Times Television Network. I'm Joy Sanders wishing you and yours a very, very Merry Christmas. Merry Thanks Christmas for watching. For